Thank you for having me. My name is Joshua Satin, and I lead blockchain in North America for Wipro, where we're a partner on Hyperledger Avalon project. And we've been contributing from an integration with DLT perspective and also an integration from a ZKP or zero knowledge proof perspective. We originally got into this in looking at how we could utilize the trusted computing framework in responding to the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, where they were looking to use zero knowledge proofs around um, executing ma uh, management of spam and malware that's going to phones through text messaging and phone calls. So we could offload some of that workload. And then we brought it online into this use case with cold chain. So basically what I'm going to do for 10 minutes is prove that everything Eugene just said is true. And that it's actually in working order and it actually exists in the real world. So what we did was we used our supply chain platform, which is built across a few different DLTs, uh, Hyperledger Fabric, Quorum, uh, R3's Corda, and Ethereum. I'm also the chair of the supply chain group here, so I'm going to be doing that later this afternoon. And this all works together in the big scheme of things. Um, what we did was use our supply chain platform across DLT, and we actually built out a platform specific to cold chain. What we're looking to do is take all these legacy processes between when you order medicine, when you order blood, when you order an organ, and how you might manage it from the point of receipt through shipping and transfer to the hospital or the doctor or wherever it's going to be used. Um, with the pharmaceuticals specifically, what we have an issue with on a constant basis is A, regulation, and B, uh, product quality. When you ship a medicine to a certain place, if it hits light, if it hits the wrong temperature, if it's dropped, if a lot of things happen to it, it's no longer effective as it was meant to be when it was originally shipped to that person. The same thing with blood and organs. They have to be maintained at certain humidity levels, certain temperature levels, etc., etc. So in building out this cold chain solution, we integrated IoT sensors that we helped develop, seeing there A around GPS, humidity, shock, and uh, temperature. So four different sensors are outfitted every time. Uh, each one is being individually set up with different boundaries based upon what the boundaries are for shock or temperature or humidity given what's being transported, if it's blood or medicine, etc. Big piece here for us is ensuring compliance with the US and other uh, regulations around counterfeit drugs and making sure that they're actually not counterfeit and making sure that provenance is maintained the whole way. And this also brings together asset tracking. The cool thing about it that I can answer questions about later is we built this three different times. We built this once on Hyperledger Fabric with everything smart contract executed off of Fabric. We built this once, which we're gonna talk about here. Today's example is actually built on Quorum and then integrating Hyperledger Avalon for TCF for IRT management off-chain. And then we also built it non-blockchain. We built it on a Salesforce stack with Einstein bolts for IoT, with Salesforce database to see what the speed and performance would be relative to the other two how it would be to build on an all vended stack versus a full blockchain stack. So you'll see on the bottom, the biggest features we get from the Quorum integration and the Avalon integration, the dual usage of blockchain is immutability, trust, transparency. The real thing here for the Intel SGX integration was speed and performance though. That's what we were going after. Tons and tons and tons of IoT information. How do we make it go as quickly as possible? So the other big piece is obviously permissioning, but really about the speed and performance. So if you think about utilizing Hyperledger Fabric and doing everything off of smart contracts, you're gonna set your thresholds and you're gonna set your timing for when you want which sensors to pick up what data. I want temperature monitored every hour or I want it done every single minute, whatever it is. That's one order. Getting back that temperature is another order. Is it within my threshold? That's another smart contract that's checking. If it's out of threshold, okay, tell this guy to do something to fix it. Send an alert to the manufacturer or the shipper or whoever it is that they actually have to pick it up or check the temperature or something's wrong. In this instance, what's really cool is that we're pre-programming all of the evaluation logic in the edge gateway. So everything related to is this temperature in or out of bounds, is the humidity level off, is being checked before it hits the quorum integration blockchain. So basically, it's getting out and it's sending up and picking up all this IoT information regularly. It's all pre-programmed off-chain. That data is collected and verified whether it's in threshold off-chain. And then a hashed message that's encrypted, that's secure, that's immutable, is delivered to that quorum chain saying A, what data was collected, B, what secure source it was collected from, and C, was it in threshold or not, all at one time. And who needs to act or not act. Again, the other big piece for us here 
is having secure data all the time and making sure all the documentation and all the asset take details are private at all times. All the details related to the underlying medicine and blood, totally private. Who's accessing it, how it's being prompted from that SGX Intel gateway, all private. So on the right hand side is just a depiction of that quorum network and how it's bringing together the third party or internal manufacturer your 3PL, which is your shipping system, your DHL or FedEx, whoever's getting it there. Typically, there's more than one shipper involved as it goes from place to place. And then clearly the retailer, whoever's selling the blood or the medicine and whatnot. On the left-hand side, you see that we have these sensor tags that we outfitted on the truck, on the carton, on the pallet. We'll go through that in the demo. It's multiple levels. So you have the item, the medicine or blood. It's in a box or a container. That container is on a pallet that power pallets has multiple cartons, so there's multiple levels of management that have to take place. All these work orders are taking place offline, specific to the IoT sensor data, exactly as Eugene was saying before. There's the threshold evaluator taking place offline there in SGX, like I said, and then the message is being delivered, completely secured, hashed out with the data smart through the blockchain that's going to give you all the data that was collected. Again, this is a real life example of exactly what he just showed. What you're seeing here is those distributed applications are, get, are generating work orders. They're submitting them through that quorum blockchain up through that trusted compute framework, which is TCF Avalon there. It goes through the trusted enclave manager up through a lightning memory database, gets all those work orders sent in, gets all the work requests sent out with all the data. It's all checked, it's all persisted, and it's all made available right back downstream to whoever needs to use it, whoever's permission to actually use it. You look up the worker, you submit the work order, it processes it real time, and then it records it. The other thing to keep in mind is that as it's recording it, as it's hitting the D app, as it's hitting this blockchain level on the left hand side, it's prompting somebody else what to do. It's integrating with a different system. Been successfully received, send an invoice. Was dropped, alert the driver to stop the car and check this. Shipments delayed, call up DHL and ask them why it hasn't moved. It prompts another order that's going through either customer service or the manufacturer or integration with someone else in the overall cold chain supply chain. So, it's space. All right. So here's a real life example of the demo we built out. All the shipment IDs for the different shipments, they could be different things, medicines, pills, blood, as I was saying before, and then the hierarchy of those shipments that we'll go through in a minute. When you create a shipment, you assign a shipment ID to whatever you're shipping. In this instance, it would be blood. You put a purchase order, logistics partner, where it's going from, where it's going to, so that you can prompt the initial record in that quorum blockchain by which all of the transactions would be appended, and all that IoT data would be eventually pointing towards creates a hash, it gets applied, and that's the creation of a new record. Here we have all the boundaries pre-mapped around cold storage and temperature, and basically we're just taking the IoT sensor that will be related to this carton, and we're attacking it to that carton. We're setting up the hierarchy of the pallet, the carton, and the box, and the product. So the product goes in the box, it comes upstream all the way to the pallet. It goes fast, but it's all going to come together over the next two minutes. We have the box that the blood's in, we have the pallet that it's on, we have the IoT sensor that's actually associated with it and pre-programmed and already has been set up with that edge gateway. And then we have the shipment that actually actually make its way through from the source destination through to the person who needs that blood, what hospital or, or uh, doctor, what have you. mapping the products, and then you can geolocate it. And you can see across all of your shipments where they're all located at any given time. You can see what the status is, etc. And so what's happening in real time is like I was saying before, these IoT beacons, each one performing a different function, such as humidity or temperature, is picking up data, sending it to that edge gateway. That edge gateway is picking it up, securing it, validating it, checking it, seeing if it's in threshold. It's then sending a secured message and appending it to that blockchain through this work order process. It's all hashed, it's all secured, 
And then we're using zero MQ in the Lightning Memory Database to have real-time messaging to that quorum blockchain to send in those work order payloads and have them received so we can act and do whatever we need to do to real-time manage this blockchain, real-time manage this cold chain supply, and the shipment from beginning to end. <coughs> Any issues are stamped and showed, and as we'll see in a minute, we have a dashboard, and depending on what parameter you're managing, the dashboard's either gonna tell you exactly what the humidity or temperature level is, or it's gonna tell you red, yellow, green, oh no, this is okay, or we have a problem here, act. Each one of these is a different IoT sensor message. Top one's humidity for, this, for the carbon. The next one is tamper. The next one is, te is temperature, and so on and so forth. They're all related to the same shipment, and you can open up any one at any given time, see what shipment it's related to, check the details, where they came from, ensure they were secured, et cetera. And on the left-hand side, you have all the real-time transactions and the alerts coming in as well. So a dashboard view, if you were in the truck, you'd have a different view, it would be integrated with your software. If you're managing from in the operations center, this would be more of the view you have to make sure everything is being fixed and monitored real time. So, it's all about impact here. The quorum blockchain is what's integrating the different databases and systems across the full supply chain of the cold chain. That's what's bringing together the driver and the, the manufacturer and the retailer and all the shippers, et cetera. What Avalon's doing is enabling all that IoT data to be mass basis, be performed off-chain, be collected and secured, be insured as always coming from provided source and authorized source, and being able to do it much quicker than we would be able to get in just a straight DLT implementation using only smart contracts like we did with Fabric. Here is just the impact of all the blockchain all the people from the pharma executive who can see that the recorded blockchain is giving consensus and creating the shipment and getting it where it needs to be. You can see from the person who's doing logistics or manufacturing or distribution that they can confirm provenance at these immutable hashes and sort of that there's no counterfeit and authenticity is ensured at all times. And then finally, the smart contract checks and the usage of Avalon ensure a really great audit trail to ensure no violations occur at any given time, whether it's for person who's receiving it or sold it, or typically for the regulatory authorities who want to check when they want to on audits. On the bottom, we're showing finally all of the other smart contract processes that are then kicked off on final <coughs> shipment or receipt around reconciliation, invoicing, payment, settlement, etc. Those would all happen subsequently and immediately as soon as this supply chain has been met. So, any questions for Patricia? <coughs> yes. Um, you said you did this three times. Was the non-blockchain the first thing you tried, or was it the last? It was the second. Second. Yeah, we did it off. We did it on blockchain, and we did it off blockchain, and then we did the Avalon framework. So, and so, uh, just maybe you kind of said it through the impact. Is what the value of doing it? This became the fastest integration over time. The fabric integration, it was the pasture to go through the Salesforce integration, mainly because they had the added IoT, IoT Einstein gate, gateway, so you could set up all the parameters quicker, the data spec. Yeah, it was a little bit easier there. From a database messaging point of view, very similar. Definitely not the same security or the same immutability because it's obviously a centralized database. But then when we moved to this framework, IoT is much faster. And also using Quorum on set of fabric was much faster as well from an enterprise perspective. Yeah, it was the two aspects together. Quorum definitely two to three X the speed depending on what you're managing. From what we get with Fabric, the difference being this was one company supply chain. If we were looking to do it cross company, we would probably look at a Fabric network plus Avalon as opposed to Quorum. Yeah, it's their own integrated supply chain where they're adding on any third parties into their own environment. Yeah. 
super clean. Very small base. Yeah. And a lot of other applications, like things, we have a Yeah, so I mean, medical records can be skinny for the record. If you're not using actual, if it's just patient data, if it's just literally who they are and their personal PII, then it can be super skinny. You can use different proofs and consensus <coughs> methodologies to ensure that it's owned, just like a digital ID. Right. You know, when you're trying to send something heavy and big like that, we've seen some work in distributed storage with like the company Storage, S-T-O-R-J, where you have this distributed storage layer that's on top so that those medical records for, that are more recent are available more quicker you have them at your disposal. So they kind of go into a hierarchy of time based upon age. The new, older, newer records will be available quicker, older records might be stored a little bit more in the background. That's what we've seen as more successful and that you actually balance the workload based upon prevalence and priority. You know, In terms of storing data and storing documents, it would typically still be faster to institute an Avalon framework and have that done off-chain to verify the documents, verify uh, authenticity before you bring it into the network to have the blockchain do that for you would definitely be a little bit slower if you wanted to roll out a mass network, especially if it's healthcare and you're doing it across insurance, cross, cross networks. You have to assume it's cross network. So I would say look at distributed storage, and then I would say look at using an Avalon framework there also for the authenticity and management off-chain. You'd probably integrate with something like a DocuSign or another database that would store the document and they could have their own encryption on that document each time. You had to think about crypto encryption for each document so that you can verify authenticity quicker and quicker. And you can't expect them to hold an impression of every single database query that went on for every document or every document that then has been pulled up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I'm I'm happy to cover it more offline also, but I want to make sure Eugene doesn't, doesn't get delayed in the presentation you work so hard on. <laughs> Great. Let's, let's I'll answer more questions, but I'll be here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. I also have a question because of the big picture of life cycle of the actual establishment platform. I mean, you have the the Yeah, so we, we can cover that probably at the uh, beginning of the second part because otherwise we kind of like will get through that and they and we can talk offline. This is a little bit tricky. There are two layers to that. Yeah, I think the biggest piece for us right there was just ensuring that all the IoT centers and all the shipments, everything related to it was set up through the blockchain to begin with and all work orders are set and received through it as well. That's our best way of ensuring security from the beginning to end. Should be a cool question, uh, Josh. Um, yeah. Are you guys extending the trust base from the back end where uh, you have the SGX, obviously that's that's tamper proof, to the edge where you have the gateway and the sensor? Uh, what's possible to make those tamper proof? Otherwise, I can tap into the pipeline before it hits SGX and then the garbage in, garbage, garbage out, right? 
It would be, yeah. Sense. It's only going through that edge gate. It's only being picked up by that edge gateway, mm -hmm. so it's only being inbound received yeah. messaging that's verified when it's received by that gateway. So if I can hold open that the gateway and, 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 and I can attack that, and then I can send you perfect data into the system. Mm -hmm. You'd have to get hold of the IoT sensors. Yes. You'd have to replicate those and have somehow are, replace are they, the existing Are those devices and the gateways tamper-proof? That was the question. Yeah, the gateway is tamper-proof. Okay. Do, do the devices have keys? Yes, the guys all have keys, and the gateway has keys. So they're signing their own transactions? They're signing the transactions at the gateway, the gateway is signing back into the blockchain. And how do they get provisioned those keys? When an initial setup on, off the foreign blockchain, when the initial shipment is set up, yeah. the keys may maintain and created at the point of creation and align. When it's initially set up to the shipment. I definitely see that, guys, the, we can continue <laughs> the, uh, after that. So I see that there is a lot of excitement now. After well, it's all about key management. That's what it all comes down to. Exactly. If you don't have key management at every step of the way, if you can't manage it and ensure this tamper-proof, or you can't trust it, it's yeah. all it's all worthless. It's like yeah. completely yeah. understand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for more So this is um, okay. Well, now, after you excited after Josh's presentation. <laughs>